Hi guys. It is, as of 10 minutes ago, gotten to be kind of a chilly, nasty winter day again here in Paradise out in Garfield, Texas. Uh, it is Saturday, February 10th, 2018. So I'm trying to uh, rush spring. Uh, trying to rush spring by putting in my big old organic vegetable garden and cornfield out here in Garfield, Texas. So this <coughs> video is going to be the best I can do on doing how to build a raised bed garden. There are 10,000 ways to build a raised bed garden. This is the way Hambone Littletail builds his raised bed gardens. So. It's worked for me. This is, good God, I've been doing this for over 30 years. I actually used to teach organic raised bed gardening uh, out in Eugene, Oregon. So I, I do have a little bit on my resume. And so we're going to uh, talk about how to pretty much, what, what this video is gonna bring us is just actually building the, the bed itself the actual skeleton of the bed. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the tiller here, uh, so I've already done the tilling. But a couple of things before we even get into the beds. <clears throat> Item number one on your agenda in a raised bed garden is you want to have a water source, a faucet, uh, within 20 feet. The closer your water source is to your beds, the better. I have mine, I don't know, about 18 feet in this garden. So anyway, that's number one. If you, you just bring the faucet, you've got to have water. We, we will do a uh, drip irrigation video next week when I, when I do that. So I'm just kind of laying out the lines. Because, you know, obviously your, your header hose is going to lead from the uh, faucet and then it uh, and then it goes along the heads of the beds and then you run your lines down the beds the individual beds but we're going to talk about that next week we're not going to really get into the irrigation lines in this video <clears throat> so here okay now another thing that if, if you're just starting out in this, you will read the two schools of thought of which way to orient your beds. Half the people say, take them east to west. The other half of the, the folks out there say, take them north to south. And there's compelling reasons for both arguments. Uh, it, it, it's kind of up to you guys. I have run them both ways and have not noticed a whole lot of difference in, in their production from my beds. Now these beds, this is a seven, I have seven about 33 foot beds, so seven 100 square foot uh, beds is what I have. I am running mine north to south, but uh, it, it's, it's almost whatever, whatever the lay of your land uh, suggests to you. Uh, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I take them north to south, it really doesn't matter. That's my opinion, and I'm sure some purists are going to come in here and tell me why they run them the other way. Okay, so if you're breaking a new piece of ground, that's where I really wish I had the tiller here to, to show you a few things about a tiller. Number one, get a rear tine tiller trust me on this one they look like you know they're twice the size of these other tillers and they and they look like they're monsters trust me guys it is a hell of a lot easier to use one of those walk behind rear tine tillers than one of those damn front tine or mid tine things if, if there's one thing you get out of this video spend the extra few dollars on the rear tine tiller okay and uh and you will thank me for that and <clears throat> the other thing i wanted to point out on the tiller at the back of the at, at the back of the actual uh the the, the actual rototiller 
uh, the, the tines, there's going to be this bar, this drag bar, and there's a big misunderstanding about this. What you want for the deepest till, and you want to set it on the deepest till, you put the bar all the way up, not all the way down. I admit, I was, I was confused for several years on this until someone finally convinced me that no, you dumbass, you put the bar all the way up up, not all the way down for the deepest till. So uh, there is a lot of confusion about that. So uh, that's really the main points I wanted to make about the tiller. Okay, now the next thing is the actual tilling, particularly if you're breaking new ground. This is actually an old garden that I put in uh, more than 10 years ago that I'm just reconditioning. Uh, but when I started out, when I came out here the first time, and if you're breaking new ground, I'm serious. You want to make 10 passes, as many passes as you can stand to make, as deep as you can go, as many passes. Uh, and, and what you do, so each pass, you go the opposite direction. So you, you till north to south, north to south, north to south, and then after you finish the north to south, then you would turn it around and go east to west, east to west, east to west, and then back to north to south. Just keep doing this tic-tac-toe pattern as many times as you can stand it and, uh, and get that ground broken up in many directions as deep as you can. Now, obviously, the last pass that you make, the final pass, you want to be in the direction of your beds. So uh, if your beds are running north to south, the final tiller pass, obviously you want to be north or south, or if you're making your beds east or west, the final tiller pass of east to west. Okay, and I'd uh, say, so this is my cornfield. The reason I don't make raised beds for corn is that Corn is one of the few vegetables that does not do well in raised beds. It tends to blow over. So corn, uh, do not plant in raised beds. But other than corn, I plant pretty much everything in, uh, in raised beds. And so here's what I do. So when, I, so when you first, when you, when you finish it, so I'm just going to look at the, the cornfield. It's just going to look like this. You're just going to have your tilled field. Okay, so here is how I do my raised bed. So I've already started the project. So imagine that uh, this is what your ground looks like. And I'm going to hand the camera over to my buddy, brother Mike. Howdy, howdy. All right, Mike's going to be the videographer. And because uh, I need my hands free. So again, try to imagine that this is just a freshly plowed field. As I say, we've already started the process. Here's what I do. I make three foot, I make three foot wide beds. Uh, three foot wide bed is, it, it, so it's 18 inches to the middle. So it's very easy to walk down and reach into the middle. Absolutely don't go wider than four feet on your beds. Uh, so three or four feet, if you get over four feet, you're not gonna be able to reach the middle of your bed to do the picking. I've always preferred three feet. I'm kind of small, my arms aren't real long. So what I literally do is, <clears throat> so what you wanna buy is six two foot garden stakes. They cost 25 cents each is what I paid for them. So you get six garden stakes and you put strings between the, the stakes, each pair of stakes as long as your bed. So if your bed, a 33 foot bed is a great length on a bed uh, because that's roughly a 100 foot, 100 square foot bed. You know, 33 times three, close enough to 100. So, <clears throat> so I would take out a 33 foot string and, and make three lines. So and you just set them out so we would be out in the middle of the dirt. I just don't want to be walking all over my freshly tilled dirt. And I literally, you, you, your very first line that you, that you put out in your garden is the most critical line of all. That first line 
sets the tone for the entire garden. So make sure that's the line you want your bed because every other line, as far as you go, is gonna be measured off this very first line. So you set out your, your, your first line in your north, south, east, west, whatever direction, stake it down in each end, and then you simply, if I can get my old man glasses here, see what I'm doing. I simply just literally get out a little tape measure, a little, as long as it's three feet long, and you, and you measure from that first stick, and you measure out 36 inches, and, and hammer in your stick. Uh, and, and trust me guys, I'm, not, I'm a Virgo, and a lot of people say, Hambone, you're, you're, you're too damn anal, this is crazy. I, I'm telling you guys, <laughs> if you will spend an extra 20 minutes on this for the rest of your life, uh, you, you will appreciate having nice straight beds there in terms of your irrigation hoses, your harvesting, your future tilling. You want to have evenly spaced straight beds. So you have, so you put your second line in 36 inches parallel to your first line. So you now have, that is what establishes the width of the bed, those four stakes. And then what you do is you go out 24 inches, which I think is a good, uh, a good space for the, the paths between the beds is where actually the work is going to go. The paths between the beds are, are every bit as important as the beds. So I make mine two feet wide, which just happens to be, amazingly enough, the width of a rototiller. And you'll see why this is very important uh, very soon. So I just, my third line is 24 inches parallel to my second. So what you have uh, is, is, a, is your first line and 36 inches from that you have your second line, so you have your three foot wide bed. Now just imagine, you'll just be in just plain old level plowed ground when you, when you start this. And uh, then you're gonna have a two foot uh, line here in, in your ground. And so what you do, and so you already have on your bed, it's already as deeply plowed as it's gonna go, hopefully six to eight inches deep. At, the, at ground level, it's already. And then what you have, in the, in the two foot line next to it, you have your plowed ground, and you simply get your shovel, depending on if you're right or uh, left-handed, you get a flat shovel, not a spade, a flat shovel, and you simply, and this is the hard part, guys. This sucks. This job sucks. You might want to go to Home Depot and rent yourself a, uh, I could say something racist, but I won't. You can rent yourself a helper to do this part of the job. Since I'm right-handed, I flop over to the right, obviously, if you're left-handed. So what you do is you just go down the line and, and take the dirt out of the uh, out of the, the two foot line, and and go line to line with it. You know, do, do your full 24 inches. And so what you're doing is making your bed deeper and deeper and deeper with tilled with tilled uh, earth. So uh, so come over here and show them what this is going to look like. Uh, so as you go down the line, you know, it's just gonna, you're gonna be creating this trough. All right, and so you're, and what's gonna be left, let's move over, when you finish, it's gonna look like this. And you have this nice clean bed, but here's, here's the kicker, you're not done yet. What you do, once you've created the, the the tray the, the first time is you get your tiller and you run the tiller again as many times. I, I do it at least twice. After after you run it once, run
run it again and dig down deeper. And then you, so you've created this again and put it on top. As many times as you want to do this, I've done this as much as four times because every time you do it, you're making your bed deeper and available for the roots. Uh, you're making it higher and deeper. And of course the, you know, the, the, the dirt underneath here is never gonna be used again. And so once your bed is created, you never set foot on this bed again. Do not ever put, there's no reason to ever set your foot on this bed again. All you're walking is in here in the trays. They, they, I've read they have these raised beds in China that are 2,000 years old. And so what this allows you to do is what I do with the, with the, with the in-between stuff is just whatever organic compost you can get. I get those, these big old Home, bag, home Depot bag fulls of leaves that people set out in Austin. Leaves, grass clippings, whatever. Try not to put stuff that's going to have weed seeds in it, obviously, but, but tree leaves and just all sorts, any sort of compost, just dump in these, anytime you get some, just dump them in the paths, and then you're going to be walking all season, and you're going to be, your, your feet are actually going to be composting on crushing it, and so what you're going to do is twice a year, in the spring and the fall, you just shovel layer of compost that you've created and what do you do right before you plant your spring garden in your fall garden you just get your flat shovel and keep adding that and you do that twice a year if you if you own a tiller then you could even run the till it would be better to run the tiller through but you don't really need to you'll never need a tiller again the only tool you will need I wish I had one is a spading fork not a pitchfork. A spading fork is the thing with the flat tines on it, not the round ones. A spading fork is the only tool you will ever ever use in these beds. As long as you live, you need one tool. Is a uh, is a spading fork. Okay, so that is so. Here's what it's going to look like when uh, when you've done it. So I say I'm going to have seven of these gorgeous beds and. So, so that's it. This this is 90% of the work, guys. And so the next thing is going to be your soil amendments. We'll, uh, again, this could turn into an hour-long video. I absolutely love turkey manure. Now, some of you purists are going to scream, I honestly don't know. They did not know at the place whether there's antibiotics in this turkey feed or not. Probably is. I go ahead and use it. Mm, man, good old turkey shit. Of course, it's mostly sawdust. It's it's saw it's composted sawdust soaked with turkey shit. I paid twenty dollars for this, guys. Twenty dollars for this. If you went to uh, Walmart and bought these in individual bags, this would be about two or three hundred dollars. Go to a compost place. Take your buckets and whatever. Load it yourself and. So the, there's other stuff, but the, the turkey shed is the, is the main thing. This is mainly for nitrogen. And so you need to be careful with this stuff. It, it, it can be hot. So for my spring garden, I generally put a five gallon bucket on a, on a hundred square feet. Some people might be screaming at me already. Uh, I find that's about right. Uh, the nice thing about organic fertilizer is, you know, if, yeah, you might over-fertilize a little bit and under-fertilize a little bit. So this is your nitrogen, which is really all. I, I don't have any phosphorus and potassium stuff now. So I just take the five gallon. Get all home depot bucket. As I say, be careful with this stuff because it's particularly in like tomatoes, you'll have absolutely beautiful 
five foot tall plants, but you're not going to have any blooms if you put too much of this shit. Now a wintertime garden, which is mostly greens, which are aiming for the leaves, what this turkey shit does, it feeds the leaves. So if I was doing lettuce, any sort of greens, turnip greens, collard greens, uh, mustard greens, lettuce, arugulas, kale, chard, I would put 10 gallons in here. If the crop you're aiming for is, is leaves, if you want strong, leafy, dark green leaves, you can use more because uh, that's what the nitrogen feeds. And then of course you're gonna you're, you're gonna rake all of this in and then uh, you know you can put on your whatever you want to add. Uh, the more stuff the better. And then what you're gonna do is, is just rake it all in. I don't have a rake with me now. And just rake it lightly. And there you go. And uh, I'm gonna have 700 square feet of, of planting area. So what I do in each of my beds, I make two rows, and when it's time to uh, do the, uh, the irrigation lines, pretend like the shovel is a hose, you're just gonna go in, so you have these three foot wide beds, so you know, there'll be You'll, you'll come off your main header hose. And I put two lines in, one foot in. So, you know, there's two lines a foot apart. So you one foot from each edge, and then they'll be one foot apart. And so you put on the, you put on down your, your, your irrigation hoses. And then the final thing is, uh, And so literally, now of course you're going to have all of your, you're going to have, you're going to have your soil amendments already in, you're going to have the top of your bed raked smooth, you're going to have your two drip irrigation lines, and then uh, this stuff can get pricey, uh, I'll be lucky to get one bed out of this, is you do your, your, your Cover and you put it directly over the lines and you just roll out the ground cover and uh, and on the hoses there's all sorts of choices on the emitters so through the cloth you'll actually be able to feel where your emitter is the water emitter for the uh, you know for your plant you want to plant your little starts or your seeds I do most of my just direct seeding whether it's seeds or starts, you just want to, you, you'll feel the emitter and you just get a pair of scissors or an X-Acto knife and you just cut a little hole, about a four inch hole. You might want to get a handful of organic fertilizer right before you plant your seeds or your start. And so you plant directly through the top of the thing and that's it guys. And then all you need to do this hog keeps the weeds out and the moisture in, so the the, the uh, irrigation lines are you know between this and the soil, and all you have to do is uh, is water is turn on the faucet, and you can even get these automatic water little little doodads that will even turn on the water for you. This is why I call it some, call my gardening style maintenance free organic garden it really is you're, you're gonna you're gonna work a whole lot harder the very first time you make your beds but what I'm telling you once these beds are in here guys they're here for 2,000 years as long as you as long as you're taking care of them and uh, so I hope that helps if you have any questions for me uh, feel free to leave a comment and I will try to uh, get back I will try to answer anybody's questions. And uh, that's it. That is chapter one of Hambone's organic raised bed maintenance free garden. And get out there and get your hands dirty. Bye guys.